being printed now and uh, we'll have a vote here fairly shortly. Uh, I just want to set the stage from my view, my point of view, I think I speak for most people in our conference, uh, for what we're trying to do here. Uh, up until now, we've been able as a body to work together on COVID relief. And the question is, why can't we do it again? I think I know the answer, but I want to remind people what we've done uh, in a bipartisan fashion. On March 5th, 2020, when we had President Trump, a Republican Senate and a Democratic House, we approved 8 billion, 96 to 1. We're just beginning to understand the virus. March 18th, uh, a few weeks later, 355 billion, 90 to 8. Uh, March 25th, 1.9 trillion, 96 to nothing. So from March 5th to March 25th, we passed three bills, uh, well over $2 trillion, 96 to 1, 90 to 8, and 96 to nothing. So I would argue to the American people that it's not like the Republican Party and the Democratic Party can't work together when it comes to COVID relief. But now that the Democrats have the House, the Senate, and the White House, there seems to be no desire to go down that road, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So April 21st, 2020, we did $355 billion more. That was by voice vote. Spending $355 billion by voice vote is pretty astonishing. $1.9 trillion, 96 to nothing, is pretty astonishing. September the 30th, 2020, $8 billion more, 84 to 10. December the 21st, just a few months ago, we spent another trillion, 92 to 6. Why don't I bring this up? I bring it up to show that there's plenty of bipartisanship around COVID relief and that bipartisanship has stopped. And President Biden made a big deal about wanting to uh, bring the country together and find common ground. Well, the one area that we'd actually had common ground, we've abandoned common ground to deal with a $1.9 trillion package just months after we authorized $1.04 trillion. And here's the problem I think Republicans have. The $1.9 trillion being proposed now, about 90% of it's got very little to do with COVID. It is a liberal wish list. And the reason I know it's a liberal wish list it's because Senator Schumer said 15 times yesterday, about 15 times, that it wasn't a liberal wish list. So if Senator Schumer's saying it's not a liberal wish list, it's a liberal wish list. And I'll be able to prove that in more detail. So that's the history of bipartisanship. That bipartisanship has been destroyed. We had 10 Republicans, I think, go to the White House to offer around $700 billion that would extend checks that would do vaccinations, would do a lot of things that we think we need to still do, but that went nowhere. So another point for the American people. We're going to a partisan approach to COVID for the first time. I went over the, the amount of money we've appropriated for the COVID problems uh, the country's experienced. And here's what I want you to understand. We're gonna spend $1.9 trillion in a partisan fashion I think a lot of it is very much unrelated to COVID simply because they have the power to do it. They now have the power of the federal government, complete power, control of the Senate, control of the House, control of the White House. They've abandoned part by bipartisanship. We had the presidency and the Senate. They had the House. We're able to work together. Now they've got it all. They're running us over, literally, uh, uh, legislatively here. Uh, I think we've made reasonable officers. Nobody's willing to compromise. They see this as a moment to do a lot of things they've been wanting to do for years that has nothing to do with COVID. But another problem they have, in my view, is that you're appropriating $1.9 trillion, most of it not related to COVID. We haven't spent the money that we've uh, allocated in the past. So administrative actions are still uh, $200 billion that we haven't spent. Legislative actions, $3.1 trillion. We've spent, we've appropriated $4.1 trillion. There's still a trillion dollars that hadn't been spent yet. The Federal Reserve actions, they allowed $5.9 trillion to be allocated to help businesses for failing. They spent $2.8 trillion. The vaccine is getting out by the day. 
Uh, we're hopeful that we can, uh, you know, change the, the course of the virus, get people back to work. Uh, in this bill, they do a lot of things unrelated to COVID because they can. And why are we opposed to this? Because it's a lot of money that's being spent on things unrelated to COVID. We haven't spent the money we appropriated in, in past uh, efforts yet, but we're going to spend $1.9 trillion more. And I think it is very unfortunate. And I hope the American people understand that this is spending money for the sake of spending money, not to combat COVID. So let me give you some examples of what's in this bill. The minimum wage dropped out. It's not, now's the worst possible time, I think, to go to a $15 hour minimum wage. Just think about your own communities. How many restaurants and hotels have had to reduce or close down because of COVID restrictions? And we're finally beginning to come out of it a bit to add a $15 an hour mandate doubling the minimum wage would be increasing the cost of doing business after the government at the state and local level has shut the business down. So the, the business has been reduced in terms of revenue because of COVID restrictions, and now the federal government is gonna mandate a doubling of, your, of the minimum wage that the business has to absorb and pass on to the consumer. So that is out. We can raise the minimum wage in a responsible fashion once we get COVID under control. There was $100 million for a Silicon Valley underground rail project that, that didn't pass the uh, smell test. The only reason that's out is we made a big deal about it. But they saw the COVID package as a chance to put $100 million into a Silicon Valley underground rail project, uh, which shows you their mindset toward this bill. This bill is not about fighting COVID. It's about a chance in a partisan fashion to do things um, they couldn't do otherwise. There was a 1.5 million from the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund uh, regarding the Seaway, Seaway International Bridge in New York. And the, the Silicon Valley Underground Rail Project may make sense. Uh, Senator Schumer's bridge project may make sense. We're going to do an infrastructure bill. Seems to me that we would take these infrastructure projects and put them in an infrastructure bill and try to have a COVID bill related to fighting COVID. But clearly, they're taking an opportunity, my friends on the other side, of loading this bill up with a liberal wish list, parochial interest, because they can't. And I hope the American people will understand what's going on and bring back a balance to power in Washington in 2022. Because if you let them have it all, this is a sign of things to come. But we'll talk about that later. There's $20 million in the bill for the preservation and maintenance of Native American languages. That might be something that makes sense. But we're dealing with a COVID package. And $20 million for the pre preservation and maintenance of Native American languages. $135 million for the National Endowment for the Arts. I'm an appropriator. This is an appropriation bill. It's not a COVID bill. The committees I'm on, we actually vet this stuff to see if it makes sense to put it in the normal appropriation cycle. They take a, co a COVID problem, and it's a real problem still to this day, and they load it up with things unrelated to COVID because they can. We can't stop them now. Maybe one day we can stop them and go back to the old way of doing business where we sat down and worked together as Democrats and Republicans to spend over $4 trillion to combat COVID. My, my hope is that we will have some balance in the future we don't have today. $135 million for the National Endowment for the Humanities. What has that got to do with COVID? There are people really suffering out there. And $135 million for the Endowment for the Arts, $135 million for the Endowment for the Humanities. That's still a lot of money where I come from. $200 million for the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences. I am sure there's needs out there for 
museums and library sciences, but it should go through the appropriations process where we'll have a chance to make a case for it or against it rather than being crammed into a bill that's being printed while I speak. We're talking about a $1.9 trillion COVID package with 90% unrelated to COVID being printed while I speak. Now, if that's good government, count me out. Funding for Planned Parenthood. What's that got to do for COVID? PPP loans for labor unions. Paid leave for federal employees. $86 billion bailout for union pensions. Maybe something we want to look at, but in a COVID bill? This is why people are so turned off to Washington, because we take a crisis, a problem facing your family and your community, and they've turned it into a spin fest, a liberal wish list indeed come true. New taxpayer-funded executive branch employee emergency leave program. Uh, the money for schools. We haven't spent the money we've allocated for schools yet. We're trying to open schools. The money that's been allocated for schools is still most of it, a lot of it's been unspent. So in this bill, we have 68 billion for K through 12. The money should be given to people opening schools and only five billion of that will be spent this year. Most of the money for K through 12 uh, assistance is in 2022 and the years that follow. That's not an emergency COVID package. That's just putting money into the education system uh, in a fashion they like, and we don't have any input over. It really has nothing to do with fighting the COVID crisis and getting our schools reopened. Um, of the $129 billion for K through 12 in this package, $6.4 billion is to be distributed this year. The $68 billion was in the last round, only $5 billion this year. So most of the money for schools is spent in the out years. And again, that's just an opportunity taken by them. Uh, of the $129 billion, $122 billion for K-12 schools will not be spent until years 2022 to 2028. God, I hope we don't have to deal with COVID in 2028. Uh, we've approved six COVID bills. We've spent over $4 trillion, appropriated over $4 trillion. A trillion is yet unspent, and we're doing $1.9 trillion, where 90% of it has nothing to do with COVID. Why are we doing this? Because they can. They've abandoned the bipartisan model that worked. They've chosen a partisan model. No matter what they tell you, my friends on the other side, this is a liberal wish list. This is very much seizing the moment, taking a crisis, a problem in America, and using it to advance causes completely unrelated to COVID, spending money that hasn't been vetted, spending money that uh, has nothing to do with COVID because they can. And the only thing I can tell you about spending money, count me in for helping people get back on their feet. I've always been for a direct payment. Count me out for a $1.9 trillion spin fest unrelated to COVID in a partisan fashion. Uh, this is everything President Biden said he wouldn't do. The inaugural speech rings hollow when it comes to this provision, the $1.9 COVID pack, trillion COVID package. Everything President Biden said he wanted to do for the country, he abandoned. And it's not like there's plenty of Republicans that would sit down and work with our Democratic friends to do another round of COVID relief, but it's got to be related to COVID, and we want to spend the money we've appropriated in the past first. Maybe that's an odd concept in Washington, but I'll make a bet. Most Americans find it odd that we would appropriate money for a problem and we haven't spent the money we've already appropriated in the past. We'd get that out the door to see what needs to be done in the future. I think most Americans believe now is not the time to load a bill up with a bunch of stuff unrelated to COVID because we need every dollar to hit the mark. But we'll have a chance to talk about that in the coming months and there'll be another election coming before you know it. 
And the only thing I can uh, leave with the American people here is that they have it all in terms of power. This is what they've chosen to do. They've chosen a partisan path, rejecting the bipartisan path. They've chosen to put most of the money in the bill for things unrelated to COVID simply because they can. And the last election was about what would happen to our country if Democrats got in charge of everything. Many of us on our side said it'd be one of the most liberal agendas in the history of American politics would come forth pretty quickly. I had no idea it would come forward this quickly. I had no idea that they would abandon a bipartisan approach to COVID because it seems to be the one area that we've had success regarding working together. So during the campaign, I said there'd be two areas I thought we could do bipartisan uh, legislation. One was COVID, the other is infrastructure. Boy, was I wrong about COVID. So I'm hoping that the American people pay some attention to this debate. We're going to have some really good amendments on our side talking about how we would spend the money differently and why we would choose not to spend some money in this bill because it simply has nothing to do with COVID. Uh, the American people have suffered uh, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, there are better days ahead. I want to do as much as we can for vaccinations and helping people get back into school. And I'm willing to help people struggling out there. But you shouldn't be giving a $1,400 check to people that made $200,000 as a couple. They've changed that. They've taken the, uh, the Silicon Valley Railway out. They've taken the bridge out because they had to, not because they wanted to. So we're going to have a lot of amendments that will show what we would do with your money versus what they would do with your money. We're going to have a lot of amendments that would show what we would do with COVID and how to fight COVID versus what they would do with COVID. And uh, that's what a democracy is all about, working together when you can and showing differences when you mu must. So there are going to be a lot of differences in this debate. And I think this will not be the last time you hear about this bill. I think this bill is going to resonate for uh, months and years to come in all the wrong ways. With that, I'll uh, yield the floor, Mr. President. Note the absence of a quorum.